How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be doing an update on an old video that I did, so let's get right into it. So about one year ago, I did a video titled How to Undercoat a Deck, Why You Should Undercoat Your Mower Deck. And basically that video uh, just explains why you should wash the debris off of the top of your deck so that it doesn't rot out and why you should use some sort of rust preventative to prevent your mower deck from rotting out entirely. Now there's numerous ways of doing this. Some people use a compound called uh, POR15. Other people use uh, just like a rubber guard, rubberized spray. But the way that we do it here at Eliminator Performance, I use an oil-based corrosion free rust preventative and it works wonders because uh, I've never had a problem where a deck that we've undercoated has come back and it's been rotted out so that video that I did pretty much had mixed reviews half the people kind of say hey thanks a lot for the good information you know really helped me out this uh, made it you know pretty simple and it was straightforward and other people were like oh that's not gonna work you know why would you put rust preventative over top of rust and why wouldn't you use a, a, a wire wheel to clean the deck and then you know other guys were saying oh you should take epoxy and epoxy the underside of the deck so it's nice and smooth so that grass doesn't stick to it and listen guys those people they don't know what they're talking about I've been doing this for about 10 years now and I've been doing it professionally as a career for about four years now and like I said I've never had a problem with undercoating a deck and having a deck come back where it's been rotted out after I've undercoated it. So let's go have a look at the machine that we did last year. So in my how to undercoat a deck video, the mower I was working on was a Toro LX465. Even though this is also a Toro LX465, this is not the same machine that was featured in that video. This is a different Toro. However, it had the exact deck undercoating service performed in 2017 as seen in my how to undercoat a deck video. I just wanted to be clear on that so there's no trick here. But the thing that you guys are going to be interested in is the mower deck. So we can see down here we got a little bit of debris on the top of the deck and that's just because our customer doesn't take the hose to it and wash it off after cutting. We have a little bit of dry grass building up underneath the belt guard here. So I'm going to end up pulling that off and we'll clean that out as well. Now normally what we would do is we'd get the machine We'd power wash it completely like it is now, then we'd pull the deck off and then we'd flip the deck upside down and power wash it. But for the purpose of this video, I haven't touched the machine at all. We've just done uh, an oil change, so we've you know warmed it up and we've done an oil change and filters and that's it. So what I'm gonna do is pull this deck off and then without washing it or touching it in any way, I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna show you guys just how good the undercoating works and prove to you guys that the grass does not stick to the decks once they're undercoated with the corrosion free rust inhibitor. So here's a little preliminary look at the top of the deck on this uh, Toro LX465. It's uh, really simple to pull this deck off. You just take the two little spring pins and you pull them out and then up at the front here, you just have to push the deck forward to get it out of that bar. You just lift that bar out of that slot and you can pull it out on the left side of the machine because you then have to get your blade and gauge cable out. So our customer said he was going through some pretty heavy wet grass because it needed to be cut and normally he said he doesn't cut in the wet conditions but you can see all kinds of sticks here and uh, tons of grass you know packed in on the pulleys but as far as the top of the deck goes you know no real signs of uh, rot or rust you guys can see wherever we hit it with uh, the rust preventative uh, nothing's really changed you know there's a little bit of rust still there but uh, that's basically uh, what was there last year so nothing's really changed on the top of the deck and again I'm not going to be washing this I'm going to pull this out farther uh, take that cable off and then we'll get it flipped upside down so I can show you guys now there's many ways of properly prepping a deck and if I was doing it for my own personal riding lawnmower what I would do is clean the deck power wash it first then let it dry go in there with a wire wheel and blast away any of the rust that's there then go and use something like the POR15 or a rust converter that will convert any remaining rust into paintable metal and it should turn it black. Then once that's dried, you would go over and paint your entire deck from top to bottom. Then once the paint is dry, you can then go and apply an undercoat or an oil-based rust inhibitor. That would be the ultimate way of preventing rust on your mower deck. But at the end of the day, it's just not worth it for my customers. And the reason behind that is if I have to go through all of those steps, 
a simple deck cleaning and undercoating would cost my customers $300. The way we do it now, we charge an hour of labor, 60 bucks, and it's out the door. Okay, so I got the deck completely off now. We're gonna lift this up, have a look at the underside of it. And there you go, guys. So a little bit of grass stuck around where the blades is, but check it out, no rust whatsoever. None at all. That's all bare metal that has not rusted. There's a little bit of discoloration there just from dirt and whatnot, but that's it. So now we'll basically do the same thing. We're gonna go in and I'm just gonna scrape away all that. I heard some people comment, you shouldn't power wash your deck because you'll blast out all the grease from your spindles. I don't aim the pressure washer directly at the spindles. I just go around it and then for anywhere around here, I'll just, you know, that stuff just peels off. But you guys can see, like, look at, so this is all dry here on the outside, but if you get into the part of it, see it's starting to get wet. That's all wet grass. So again, you know, if you leave this stuff on your deck without washing it, your deck's gonna rot. But anywhere where there's been grass, you guys can see that's not rust, that's just, bare metal and the corrosion free rust inhibitor has prevented this deck from rotting out it's in excellent condition so this is a one year update from a deck that we did about 12 months ago so again like i said guys a little bit of grass sticking to it but that's going to happen regardless of whether your deck is painted or whether you use a rust converter whatever but what you're going to find is when you're cutting grass this is going to happen anyways you look at a brand new machine after a year of use and all the paint comes off of the bottom of the deck and i've seen some people use uh, rubberized you know like a kind of bumper guard and that stuff is not really good because moisture can get in between the rubber guard and the deck. I don't recommend any of that, guys. Like I said, I recommend just hitting it with some uh, eco-friendly Rust Cure Formula 3000. The stuff works wonders, and this deck is not rotted through. Now, if I didn't do what I did last year, you know, clean it and hit it with the Rust Cure, Rust Preventative, those spots up there, 100%, they would have been rotted through. Uh, some of the spots down here by the spindles would have been really thin as well, and it's really hard to repair spots like that with metal you go in there with a welder and you start welding with thin metal and the welders just gonna blow through it but we can see here that because I haven't washed it first all of this stuff here is dry so that's not really holding any moisture right now and if we look under here you know that's still metal guys there's no rot there there's just dirt and grass built up and like I said you know doing it the other way where you're going through all of those steps that's gonna take me a lot longer than it would be just power washing this and hitting it with a little bit of uh, rust cure rust preventative so again for all the haters that were saying that this doesn't work it does it's proven I've been doing it for years okay so I've flipped it up onto my dolly I'm gonna wheel that out front to where my power washer is you guys can see it looks a lot better than what it was there's still some grass in there but I'm gonna blast that out with the pressure washer this is what's come out of the top and the bottom of the deck. So there's quite a bit of grass here. And then I've gone and just scraped the underside of the deck. Just got most of the clumps out. And then right down in here, that's all still metal in there. So the rust preventative, even if you leave a little bit of grass in there, what'll happen is the rust preventative will soak into that and it will just prevent the rust from happening. Now we have to keep in mind the science behind rust and basically that's what happens when metal is exposed to water and oxygen and the metal just rusts away. So the rust preventative provides a protective barrier in between the metal and the oxygen outside and just prevents the rust from occurring altogether. So for the people that were saying, oh, well, this guy doesn't know what he's doing because he's putting rust preventative over top of a little bit of rust, that's just surface rust. There's no real rot where the rust has gone into the inside of the metal. This is just a little bit of surface rust where the paints come off. You know, ideally you would want to, yes, take a wire wheel and get rid of that rust and then hit it with some converter, like I said, and then you can go and paint it and, you know, then undercoat it on top of that. But the way that I do it is I just blast it with the pressure washer, scrape down anything that's left on the deck and then just hit it with the rust inhibitor and that rust cure like I said it soaks right in there and it prevents that surface rust from rusting even further and you guys saw that on the top of the deck where I did those tiny little holes and they had a little bit of rust around them they're the same now the rust hasn't spread any further the paint hasn't chipped away any more than it already was so this is a job well done in my books and the customer gets a fair bill he doesn't
doesn't have to spend a crazy amount of money just to do something that really doesn't need to be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and power wash this thing and then we'll bring you back for the undercoating process. So when I'm pressure washing my mower decks, I just put them on a big dolly and basically it makes moving them around a lot easier. And this is something that I wanted to get on camera. So I've uh, pressure washed the top of this and I've also gotten underneath the little uh, spindle housing covers there. But uh, you'll notice if we can get a good shot here, see all that water? All that water is beating off of the deck. So even though I'm using pressurized water and we coated this a year ago, all of this water right here, guys, look at all of that water is just beating off. So that rust cure is still on this paint, even after a year later. I can actually tell there's a little bit of the rust cure because when you wash these, you can see kind of like the rainbow coming out, but you don't have to worry about any of that polluting the earth because it is eco-friendly. It says right on the can. So what I'm gonna do now is flip this up, pressure wash the underside, and then we're gonna let it dry completely. And then we're gonna go ahead and rust cure the entire underside of it and then we'll go around and hit wherever the, there's paint coming off there's a little bit of paint there coming off and again that little hole at the front right there and that's it guys this is how to undercoat your deck 101 so the deck is now completely power washed and all of the grass is stripped from it so again you know the paint's peeling off here in areas like this it's all bare metal so we're gonna let this whole deck completely dry so that there's no water on it at all and then we'll go ahead and sharpen the three blades on this and then once the blades are sharp then we'll go ahead and undercoat the entire underside of this deck so I got a Toro GTS here and it's a six horse lawnmower and this has an aluminum deck on it and just to show you what happens to aluminum when you leave a bunch of debris on top of it. The thing about an aluminum deck is even though it doesn't rust, it will corrode and what will happen is water gets in there and the grass that you leave on top of the deck will soak up moisture and that moisture will create calcium buildups. And if you've ever flipped one of these Honda or Toro or Troy built aluminum deck machines upside down and you've looked at the bottom, you've probably seen these big white chunks and that's actually calcium buildups. And what will happen is over time the aluminum will get pitted and eventually it will wear down the thickness of the aluminum and you'll end up getting basically the same thing that happens to a steel mower deck is the uh, material just gets thinner and it gets weaker. Even though you have an aluminum deck and people think that uh, you know these things don't rust, uh, they do still corrode and you gotta maintain them just like you would a normal mower deck. So wash them and make sure you clean them off guys. But I just wanted to uh, show you this because I figured it was uh, Interesting little piece to add into this uh, video here. Okay, so now we're sharpening the blades one by one. We're just using a stone on a die grinder to put a nice sharp edge on here. We're also using a little bit of Permatex, nickel anisees on the threads where these blades sit so that they don't rust. And you guys can see we're putting a nice sharp edge onto these things. That's the way we do her. Now, a lot of guys were also saying that uh, once you sharpen a blade, that sharp edge that you put on the blade, it ends up dulling after a couple cuttings. And that is true for the most part. You have to do a blade sharpening about a couple times per season. Uh, they don't stay sharp forever, but uh, it does make your lawn look a lot nicer. And then we have a little tool here that is a balancer for blades. And you go on and you put this thing on top of this little pedestal right here. And if your blade hangs down, let's say your blade goes on and it hangs down on the left side, that means that it's heavier there. So you have to go and grind away at that side and take a little bit more material off. And then you'll see the blade come up a little bit. Uh, now it's a little tricky when you have these blades with these little uh, cog kind of machined into them because uh, what happens is it doesn't sit nicely on this little pedestal. So normally when you have just a hole put into them, they sit nice and flush and centered up on this thing. Whereas uh, with this, when you go to put it on, sometimes they get out of whack. But that's how we sharpen and balance our blades. Now if you want, you can go and spend about three grand on an actual blade balancer. They're basically like uh, tire balancers. Some of them have like a spindle and you bolt the blade right onto the spindle and then it spins it. And just like a tire balancer, it tells you which side is heavier and then how heavy that side is. And then it basically you go and you grind a little bit away. And But those things are like three grand. So that little pedestal we bought it, I think it was Princess Auto for like, I don't know, five bucks. 
and it works pretty good. And to undercoat this deck, we're gonna be using some Rust Cure Formula 3000, and this is basically the stuff that we use on all of our decks. Works great. Okay, so we've now gone, sprayed the underside of the deck, and then brushed it in. Like I said, guys, you just layer on thick, and that'll put a protective coating in between your metal deck and the outside air, and this stuff does what it says, it prevents rust. And like I said before, you know, we undercoated this last year, and even these spots that have bare metal here, they're still bare metal. So there's no rust there, and that's pretty much unchanged. So we're gonna flip this thing upside down, and then we'll end up rust converting some of the spots, and we'll use the rust preventative in some other spots. Okay, so now we've rust converted some of the areas, and then on top of that, we've also used the Rust Cure Formula 3000 just to hit any areas where there's bare metal or surface rust. Again, these little holes here where a little bit of rust is starting, and again, like I showed you, the water was beating off, and that's after 12 months, basically. This stuff works awesome. So I'm gonna get this deck installed, and then this machine is ready to be returned back to our customer. Okay, so I got the mower deck back underneath the machine. I've hooked up the blade and gauge cable, and I've just had to take a 3 8 socket on a little ratchet there to take the belt guard off so that I can now wrap the belt around. And we have a true blue half by 90 inch, and that's a 248-090, and that's from Stens. So here's our little diagram here. You guys can see we're gonna wrap it around this pulley here, around through this one, and then around this one here. And the pulley guard here has a little belt keeper on it, so you don't really have to take that off. You can just take the whole cover off. And then using a half inch socket, I've loosened this bolt off just to get that belt keeper up. And then with a 9 16 I've loosened that bolt there so that we can wrap the belt around because you don't wanna force your belt in between those keepers. And once again, a little bit of nickel anti-seize goes a long way on these bolts here. Okay, I got my deck belt routed now. Just go ahead and give it a pull and make sure your blades turn and all of your pulleys spin without any binding so this thing's ready to go back under now and then i'll hook it up so i got the deck back installed i'm going to fire this thing up engage blade make sure everything spins freely and that's it this thing's done So that's it, this job is now finished. We're gonna put the battery on charge before we bring it back to him tomorrow. He's got a new Kevlar deck belt on there installed and we'll just have to tell him to try to avoid as best as possible any sticks because I think that's what broke and snapped his old belt was a stick jammed up in there and just took it off one of the pulleys and just snapped the belt. So now that he's got a Kevlar one on there, it should be a little bit stronger. So that's it for today's video. Just an update on a deck that we did last year and this video just proves everybody wrong. Whoever was hating, saying that rust preventative doesn't work, it does work, it's proven to work. And again, like I said, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it, but you have to understand that I'm doing this for a customer. I'm not doing this for myself. I charge $60 an hour labor. If I had to go through and do all the steps that I said before, which would be, you know, scraping it down and power washing it, and then going and rust converting it, and then going and painting it, and then going and hitting it with some rust inhibitor. That's a lot of materials that I would be using. Using. That's a lot of time that I would be spending and that all translates to the customer's bill So again for this job here, I think we're gonna charge about two and a half three hours So we did a fuel filter. We did an oil filter. We did an oil change We used about half a can of rust inhibitor and this thing should last until next year when we do it again But that's it for today guys if you enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up You know it really helps me out you can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.